Welcome back to part two of agents and discussing it. Um, it's a popular topic at the moment. Lots of people who are looking for representation, maybe changing representation, maybe exploring new avenues and thinking, yes, it would be really great to have some support in my corner. Uh, you're in the right place, my friends. And I want to help you in these two videos, if you haven't listened to part one, do go back, um, to really come up with a way that you can work that feels really good. And I have never really liked being in situations where I felt dictated by other people. You know, when people would say, oh no, but I'm <laughs> just going back to teenage years, like, oh, he's so fit though. So you should, if he asks you out, you should definitely go out with him. And I'd always be like, yeah, but I don't think he's a very nice person. Like he cheated on his last three girlfriends. So I know uh, he showed me his true colors and I have to believe them. So um, yeah, those sorts of things. I think it's really important to get to stages within your career to be able to make decisions from a place that feels solid, that feels grounded, that feels logical and ultimately feels good. Number six. I want you to think about what that person is going to do for you. So you may join an agency because you've seen their big clients. You're like, oh my goodness, they represent so-and-so who's in this TV show. Oh, I love that TV show. Me and my mom and dad love that. You know, you get all the way down that path. But I want you to think about your career and be selfish about it. What are they going to do for you right now? And I think that's really important because ultimately it doesn't matter who else is on the book and unless you're going to benefit from it, um, you know, let's be very selfish here. There's no point signing with an agent just to sit on somebody's book and be like, oh, I've got the kind of ego stamp of having an agent. This is about you working. This is about you building a career. So you have to be very aware of what's going to happen right now, rather than just hoping and wishing and kind of staying there. And so coming up with some answers in, or some questions rather, in the meeting of what can I be doing right now? Where do you see my casting? Or what companies do you see me collaborating with? What uh, What is our first... Um, benchmark here? What's our next goal that we're working towards? All of those things will be really useful for you. Um, the number seven, I want you to think about the dialogue. Um, and this is tricky sometimes because I think once people get an agent, they... They put all of their eggs in one basket. And I think sometimes people go, well, I've got an agent now, so what are they doing? And I think the emphasis always has to be in terms of your career is what are you doing? Yes, the agent is working alongside you, but most agents don't get paid from you until you work. So there has to be something in it for them. And so your regular dialogue of updating them, of helping them, of putting things together, of being creative, of being front of mind for somebody, it's really, really important. You don't want to be that professional who's a bit like, well, I don't know what they're up to. They're not doing anything. There's maybe not an incentive for them just yet until they know that you are there and you are going to play ball as well. Number eight, a contract. Not everybody makes you sign a contract. Some people make you sign all the contracts. What do you feel comfortable with? And what does this contract in the way that it is right now mean for you in the short term and in the long term? And I would always encourage you to play all of the tapes. As in, if you get a job tomorrow, that means that you are going to be signing a 10 year contract on a TV show. What does that mean if you have a falling out with that particular agent two years into that? I want you to think about all of those worst case scenarios, not because I'm negative, but because I'm a realist. Things happen, things change, and I'm always thinking about how are you protected in this? And I think 
this narrative that has accompanied so many uh, creatives for so long of like, oh, I'm not very good with contracts, or there were loads of words I didn't really understand. This is your time to really take charge, do the work, don't let the excitement of signing a contract get in the way of the small print. This is about you really taking charge of your career. Number nine, understanding how you both like to work is really, really key. Now, um, these may not be like huge things, um, but they can make all the difference. So even though I've never had this conversation with my agent, I would never phone him unless it was urgent, unless it was something that, you know, absolutely had, I I don't think I would phone him. I would probably email him. I wouldn't be phoning him at nine o'clock on a Monday morning, like to talk about my career. He's too busy. He's dealing with emails over the weekend. He's trying to get the Monday morning casting people out and really understanding what is the best for the relationship. Equally, if I did want to talk to him or if he wanted to talk to me, we would have that understanding of like, great, okay, let's sit down, let's have a meeting, I'll pop in after a casting or whatever it might be. But really understanding what this means because some agents and some creatives like to play mind games. I have no time for it. I've no headspace for unnecessary complications. And so really understanding and being upfront in that first instance of like, how do you like to work? What's going to be useful here um, is really going to keep you on that same path moving forward. And number 10, what is their attitude like? Do they operate impossibility? Do they operate in potential? Do they operate in a, oh my goodness, this next email could be really exciting? Are they enthusiastic about the industry that you're in? And yes, do that uh, thought around the agent, but also think about how you are in this agency and how you are showing up as a creative. And maybe you've got a couple of sentences, phrases that have dragged on, you know, post 2020, post all of those things of like, well, there's no work anyway, or I don't know, maybe I'm a bit too old now, or any of that negativity that just needs cleaning up. Now, your evidence in your current 3D reality may be showing you that there hasn't been a lot of work recently, but do you want to bring that to the table? And I would always ask you to think about, in terms of building that new relationship with somebody, thinking about, are you going to both be in possibility? Equally, when people go into romantic relationships, you don't want to enter going, well, you're probably going to cheat on me anyway. You're probably going to be a nightmare like all of the rest of them. You don't want to bring that old, stale baggage into the moment. Equally, if you are in conversation with somebody who is like that, and you are very positive and optimistic. And I actually had a meeting in this case. This person who I was thinking about working with, their ambition wasn't big enough for me. And some, I guess maybe the old me would have felt a bit hesitant about saying that. But I'll be very honest, you know, I want somebody to meet me where I'm at because I do the work every single day. And I'm not here just to kind of carry people along. I want to to work with that kind of energy. So I hope that's been useful. Um, If you want to buy my book, which is called Be Ready for Your Lucky Break, uh, there is an audio version on my website, which will go into more detail in terms of agents and everything to do with acting and creating and all of that great stuff. Um, If you want to do an Ask Me Anything, you absolutely can as well. That's on my website. But for now, I wish you all the luck in the world. Ask me questions down below, should you wish. And I'll speak to you very soon.